Hey, the Mueller report is finally out, and now it's time for me to put my corporate lawyer hat on and explain to you what the media isn't telling you. This is Take That with Kurt Schlichter. Okay, this is going to be one of those take that's where, where I'm coming with you from a little different direction. Yeah, I'm going to be a little smart alecky, but I'm also going to put on my lawyer hat and try and explain to you what Attorney General Barr's letter really means and why it's so unprecedented, but not in the way people are telling you. Now, look, let's look at the background. The liberals and the media and the Fredo cons, those crew shilling hacks who call themselves conservatives but really just want their own personal power and are trying to undercut the president to get it, uh, they have a huge interest in keeping this going. But what really happened with the Mueller report was unprecedented in the way that it cleared the president. Because th this isn't usually what happens, but it's not the way you've been told. Okay, let's look at the response. Uh, the, the, the report comes out and Attorney General Barr sends a letter summarizing it. Why can't he give out the report itself? Two reasons. First, uh, there's probably classified material in it. That is, there, there were uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, interactions with intelligence agencies and things. So there's, there is classified material in it. So you can't just give it out, right? Second thing, it is illegal to give out grand jury testimony. So there's grand jury stuff in there that's protected. There's classified stuff that's protected. That's got to be redacted out. Now, Democrats aren't telling you that. Let the report out. Hey, then change the law that you guys in Congress made, making it a crime to release grand jury stuff, a crime to release classified material. If you don't want it to be a crime anymore, pass a law making it not a crime. Otherwise, it can't be released. And it's all your fault. Okay. But beyond that, there is a summary. And what Barr said was two things. First, he said there is no evidence of collusion by Trump or anyone's campaign. That's the remarkable part. The unremarkable part, but the part that's getting all the attention because it provides kind of a hook for people who don't know what the hell they're talking about, is obstruction. Well, the evidence of obstruction was insufficient to convict the president beyond a reasonable doubt. It doesn't prove he's guilty or exonerate him. Wow. Okay, now we got an opening. There's evidence out there. There's evidence of obstruction. Well, when lawyers talk about evidence, they don't mean what normal people do. Okay? Normal people think of evidence as proof. Okay? And, and they, they, and it's not evidence. And I'm going I'm gonna actually do the lawyer thing. I'm going to take um, uh, California Evidence Code section 140. Evidence means testimony, writings, material objects, or things presented to the senses that are offered to prove the existence or non-existence of a fact. That's right. Anything can be evidence. Testimony, documents, pictures, uh, uh, videotapes. This can all be evidence. But you know, in a legal proceeding, you have evidence on both sides. And in a criminal proceeding, the state, federal government, must prove beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest burden of proof in the law, uh, that something's true. So you can have evidence of something, and evidence can be anything, right? Anything that tends to prove something. And it, it, it doesn't mean it's true because you have evidence on both sides and they have to be weighed. And if they aren't beyond a reasonable doubt, you can't have a criminal conviction. Now, that, that's different from the civil standard, which is more likely than not, preponderance of the evidence. That is, it's more likely than not he ran a red light and caused the car accident. Okay? In criminal law, it would be you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt he specifically ran into the person in the crosswalk. You know, intentionally. Okay, so that's that's kind of the difference. So what Mueller was saying about obstruction was we can't prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. Now that doesn't exonerate anybody, but in the law, prosecutors don't typically exonerate anybody. The only test for prosecutors is can you prove it beyond a reasonable doubt? If the answer is no, the person is not guilty. It's different from innocence. Okay. What's unprecedented is what happened in the collusion question. 
Okay, the obstruction quite perfectly normal. We had insufficient evidence to prove that there was obstruction. That's the that's the same result any time the feds don't charge somebody with a crime. It is nothing unusual. It is not an open door. What was remarkable is the collusion because Barr says, the report said, there is no evidence, zero evidence. Now that's unusual. Now remember, in every lawsuit, every criminal proceeding, there's evidence on both sides. Simply because there's evidence doesn't mean something's true. It just means there's evidence of it. Okay, and, and let, me, let me give you another example. Let's go back to that red light, right? If somebody says, I was driving through the red light and I, I, I saw the light was green, okay? Normal people will go, well, you have no evidence of it. You have no evidence the light was green. A lawyer would go, yeah, there, there's evidence the light was green. Maybe you don't have a picture. Maybe you don't have a third party witness, but you have the person who was driving will testify that it was green. And a jury could believe that, okay? So when a, a normal person says evidence, it, it means something different to us lawyers. And Mueller's a lawyer. And Attorney General Barr is a lawyer. What Mueller is saying is, hey, there are facts that could have been presented to a jury that might have supported obstruction. Maybe. You don't have to be believable. They don't have to be credible. Remember, all evidence is not credible. Okay? Just because you have evidence, I mean, it's good evidence or it's believable evidence. The term evidence is value neutral. Okay? So you can give evidence that's nonsense. You can give evidence from someone who's clearly lying. You know, he's going, ah, yeah, that's the ticket. Okay, that's, it's still evidence. It's just not credible evidence. How do you get credible evidence? Well, first the prosecutors have to look at it and go, I believe it. I believe it enough to put this guy through a trial. Then you have to get to a jury, which would say, yes, I believe that evidence over the contrary evidence. So let's sum up. What is the big deal about the Mueller report? Not the fact that they had insufficient evidence to charge the president with obstruction. We're putting aside the whole, can you indict a sitting president? That's a different issue. Mueller said, you know, it, it, you know I'm, I'm going to throw this to Barr. And Barr said, obviously you don't. There is insufficient evidence to charge the president, even if you could charge the president. That's not unusual. That's a normal charging decision. Happens every day in our criminal law. What was unprecedented is when Barr pointed out that there was no evidence of collusion. That means nothing presented to the senses that could be offered to prove the existence or non-existence of the fact of collusion. That was what's remarkable. That's the headline. You won't hear it from the mainstream media. You're hearing it from me here on The Rebel TV. This is Take That with Kurt Schlichter. Hey, if you like what you're seeing here on The Rebel TV, I want you to go over here. There's a Facebook thing over there, and there's a Twitter thing over there, and there's a little subscription bell thing there. Hit those things, and I want you to subscribe. I want you to get inside The Rebel. I want you to see all the cool stuff that's in here. If you like what I'm doing in these little videos, uh, they come out every Tuesday and Friday. Check them on out. If you like reading my stuff, well, I write at Town Hall every Monday and Thursday. You can follow me on Twitter at Kurt Schlichter. And, of course, you can get my nonfiction book, Militant Normals. You can also get my awesome novels, uh, Wildfire, People's Republic, and Indian Country, hated and, and, and despised by, like, the, the, the Fredocon cruise shilling hacks of Conservative Incorporated, so you know they're good. I'll see you next time on Take That with Kurt Schlichter.